If you happen to be a long-time viewer, you'll know that I have a bit of personal history with Necromunda Hired Gun. Back when it first released, I actually planned to review it, but unfortunately, I started to get motion sickness when playing it. With that being the case, I basically gave up on playing it, sold the game, and uploaded a video which let everyone know what was going on. Thing is though, I really wanted to play it, and over the last year, I kept seeing it everywhere getting cheaper and cheaper until I finally decided to give it another go. So what's different this time around? Well, let me explain. So what happened? Well, the game was supposed to release via digital download in May 2021. However, as far as I remember, they intentionally delayed the physical version of the game until the end of June, but then it suffered an actual delay and got pushed back to the end of July. So in the end, I waited nearly two months just to get a physical copy of the game. At that point, I abandoned the idea of doing a full review and just planned to do a recommendation video on it instead if I liked it. Well, I sat down with the game and I was actually having a pretty good time with it. I mean, not amazing, but you know, decent. And then after about 45 minutes of game time, I started to feel really quite sick. Now, I've mentioned it before on the channel, but with a few games in the past, I have had motion sickness like Metal Gear Rising and more recently Call of Duty Vanguard. That said, the queasy feeling that I got with those games was much stronger and came on much quicker. Still though, Necromunda was giving me moderate motion sickness and so I gave up on the game. I just sold it on eBay and then put out a video explaining what happened. But what changed? How was I able to play it a year later? Well, I think the first thing to note is that it has had quite a few patches in order to smooth things out. The game on launch had a lot of stuttering and the frame rate would constantly fluctuate. Not only that, but as far as I remember, you weren't really able to mess with any settings on consoles when the game first released. I've actually looked back at some Reddit posts and some videos from around the launch window, and as far as I can see or remember, the game had motion blur on as a default option with no way to switch it off, and also had a very narrow FOV or field of view. Both of those things, along with the frame stuttering and just the overall poor performance, led me and quite a few other people, it seems, to get mild to moderate motion sickness. I'm happy to report that I was able to play through the entire game in around two days, plus do a lot of the end game missions with zero motion sickness. The game now plays at a pretty smooth frame rate for the vast majority of the time with very little stuttering. Also, I was able to turn motion blur off completely and increase the FOV to its max setting, which I guess fixed the issue for me. I'm just happy that I was finally able to play the game, and while it isn't groundbreaking in any way, shape, or form, I still found it to be enjoyable, and for the price I paid for it, I think it was worth it. The game itself is a first-person shooter with some light RPG elements that's set on the hive world of Necromunda, a gigantic factory planet that produces a lot of the Space Marines' weaponry. And yeah, for those of you who may not be aware, Necromunda is set in the Warhammer 40k universe, although you won't really be seeing any Space Marines. The gameplay is split into two sections, the hub area, which is called Martyr's End, and the missions themselves. Martyr's End contains everything you need to upgrade your character, your guns, your gear, and your dog. Funnily enough, the game doesn't actually have an inventory screen that you can freely open. You can only view your inventory and change your equipment at specific places. The most common is probably right before you launch a mission. You pick the mission you want to undertake, and then the game will allow you to make changes to your gear. You'll also be able to see this stuff when you sell items to the merchant or customize your weapons. Other than gearing up and talking to some of the characters in between missions, that's pretty much all there is to the hub area, except for an arena where you can test your abilities and loadouts. Hired Gun's campaign has 13 missions to complete and can be finished in around 12 hours depending on your difficulty selection. I have to say the story itself didn't really grab me. I'll be honest, it was more the gameplay and the atmosphere that really pulled me in. It's also decently challenging, even on the easy difficulty. Of course, there are some side missions you can accept which grant extra money and gear. These side missions have three ranks which are B, A and S, with S being the most difficult but also the most rewarding. When taking on these missions, you'll also be increasing your favor with the game's various factions, although this is only represented in-game with a progress bar and nothing else. Once you fill a faction bar, you'll just get a piece of gear or a weapon as a reward. Elsewhere in the hub, you can visit the Rogue Doctor to purchase bionic upgrades for yourself and for your dog, who you can summon during a mission to attack your enemies. These upgrades include passive bonuses, increased shield, increased health, and activated abilities that you can use during combat. Movement-wise, the game actually feels very similar to Titanfall or the more recent Doom games. You can jump, double jump, air dash, mantle, grapple, and wall run, all while mixing in your weapons and using your skills. Personally, while using a controller, I found that running on the walls was a little bit more trouble than it's worth, even with the ability that gives you a massive amount of aim assist while doing it. But having said that, pretty much everything else works really well. 
The game does feature a rather slim loot system which uses colour-coded rarity and plus numbers to indicate an item's effectiveness. For example, white is your basic low-end rarity for weapons and gear, and then you have blue, purple and yellow. Blue items will always have a plus one after their name while purple has plus two and yellow has plus three. You can't find a blue item with plus three, for example, it's just there to help you understand which item is rarer at a glance. You can equip yourself with body armor which provides damage resistance as well as some other minor bonuses and three status items which also provide a minor stat buff. You'll also be looting a lot of charms and tech which can be attached to different weapons in order to gain increased credits and extra damage respectively. On top of the charms and the tech, you can also customize your weapons further by adding different stocks, barrels and even ammo types among other things. I think it's a decently fleshed out loot system overall but when you compare it to other looter shooters, it does lack a little bit of interest. To be fair though, the game isn't really a looter shooter anyway, it just kind of leans into it a little bit so it's understandable and forgivable. I should also mention that the end game is just running more of the side missions for the factions and completing the story missions with an S rank, so there really isn't much else to say about it. In my opinion, Necromunda Hired Gun is a pretty decent shooter and I'm glad that I was finally able to play it. It doesn't really feel like an indie game but it's also clearly not a AAA release. It sits very much in the middle of the two and for what it is, I think it looks rather good most of the time and plays well for the vast majority of the time. However, while the atmosphere was great, the story for me was very, very dull and the entirety of the game is a tiny bit rough around the edges. Ultimately, now that the game's a year old, it should be relatively cheap if you're interested in it. I was able to find a sealed physical copy for around £20, which is about $25 in the US. I think the game you receive for that price is well worth the money, but of course it's worth noting that we all have our own thresholds for the value proposition, so do keep that in mind. I think that if you're a fan of arena shooters, old school shooters, or perhaps the more recent Doom games, Hired Gun is absolutely worth considering. If you do decide to pick it up though, just make sure you understand that it's not going to be quite as polished as you might like, and I think you'll be fine. If you enjoyed the video, I really hope you'll consider subscribing and if you like what I do and want to help support the channel, please check out the first link in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.